a little worse for wear. Thank you. Poor thing. She looks like she can use a drink. <laughs> no, all she really wants is a telephone that doesn't have 50 people waiting to use it. Good luck. Thank you. There is no word yet when runways will be open. Please consult your airline for further information. For the time being, all flights are canceled. Dimes and nickels. And they're mad as hell. I won't take any more. Where's the money? You think you're on the Here. Uh, what? Hold this poor thing. What? That's it. What are you doing? Follow me. VIP. For thirty dollars a year, anybody can be a VIP. Sign in. Oh, hi, Mr. S. Hello. I'm afraid you won't be getting back to Chicago today either. But you're in time for champagne. Oh, perfect. Hmm. There you are, Mrs. Ted Conti from Chicago, also. Diane. Thank you, Mr. Rasmussen. Paul. Oh. Hmm. Now, as long as we're going to spend the night together, perhaps you'd better call your husband. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. New York is definitely not a festival. Are you all right, Ted? You sound so tired, darling. <laughs> no, I'm obviously not going to make it to the reunion. It's ridiculous. I don't know. Well, they don't seem to know anything. I'll call you since they tell me, okay? All right. I miss you, darling. Yeah. Bye. Where is he? 
Alimony is a big deduction, and you'll get it. Maybe you overlook some other possibilities. Oh, there is one. Don't divorce Norma. That'll double your income automatically. Don't be ridiculous. Penny and I are going ahead with it. You could be a big help, Teddy, and try and make Mom understand that. Look, Alex, if you I try to... don't understand either. Look, don't let her age deceive you. Penny is a 25-year-old woman. You're a 47-year-old boy. I'll work on these tonight after I finish up. Thank you. Anytime, Alex. Hi, Mr. Conti. Oh, good morning, Sherry. How you doing, Leonard? Your mother called twice. Sister Ma Steffi called. Your brother Frank said to remind you to take home the W 2 forms. You get too many damn phone calls, Scotty. Leonard, I love to hear you complain. Makes me feel like I don't have a problem in the world. What? What problem? Well, my wife's stranded at Kennedy Airport, and I wish you were here. My wife's here. I wish she was at Kennedy Airport. I guess I should call my ex-roommate since I'm not going to make it to Syracuse. Okay? Yes, I will. Yes, it was good to talk to you, too. Okay. Bye. <sighs> All talked out? No. It's amazing. What? Your husband? Uh, your ex-roommate, uh, your art professor? Mm -hmm. Who else did you call, anyway? My mother-in-law. Now you know the story of my life. I doubt it. Well, you haven't said a word about you. Okay, I'll say a word. Architect. Oh. Do you have a family? Yes and no. I'm divorced. I have a daughter. I have a son. Now we know all we need to know about the children. I have some pictures here. Um, now, from here on, we'll operate under Rasmussen's law. You don't show me your pictures, and I won't show you mine. <laughs> All right. Okay? Yeah. Would you like cheese on white or cheese on white? Oh, cheese on white. Good, thank you. <laughs> One of these. Thank you. These. Oh, lovely. And. I know where they keep the champagne. You wouldn't. Watch me. <laughs> that was my first contract. I was lucky to get it. I know that building. I pass it every day on my way to work. It's gorgeous. You like it? Yeah. Where do you work? I work at the art museum in the new children's wing. I almost got that contract. And I lost it. You submitted the design for it? Mm -hmm. The board of directors, in their wisdom, decided that the space capsule was too modern for children. Oh. <laughs> oh, you are hogging a blanket. This is during the night. How did you do Tell me more. Tell players? me more. Well, I was a football player. Be my blackest. you do that. I'm happy you look so good. Thank you. Tired? No, not a bit. Oh, you're a better man than I. Let's get some fresh air. <laughs>
walking in the snow. I've done it a long time. That feels nice. Now, let me put Here, give me a minute, Oh. Thank you. Oh, that's nice. Keep warm, My flight leaves in an hour. We should be getting back now. Any book you're in my flight? The IP? We'll have brunch. What's a couple hours? I came by, Coach. I better get back. Persuade you. Sills being Charlie Sills, was all set to form a delegation. Save the three martini lunch. He actually wanted to make up picket signs and march to Washington. I said, Charlie, forget about it. That reform is going to die a natural death on its own. The last thing we need is for you to bring attention to it. And Charlie being Charlie. Well, after six martinis, I think I convinced him. Whose turn is it to take the phone off, Rosie? Hello? What phone? How's it going, Andy? Pretty good. How the Blackhawks do? They won. Beautiful. Hey, wait till I butter it. Hey, by the way, you two, what happened in that dishwasher? Dad put liquid soap in it. He didn't know. Now I know. <laughs> it's a good thing I came home and I did. Hello. Yes, Nina, she's back. Mm. That's right, Nina. We're right in the middle of breakfast. Goodbye. Dad, I don't want to talk to her. Nina, hi. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I think she'll give your mother a couple of days to relax. No, no, yeah. no, no. It's all right. Well, of course I'll be over there. Well, See you, Mom. Bye, darling. See you, Dad. What color paint do Have you want? Have a good day, son. Well, that's no problem. I'll just go back to that fellow on State Street. He's got everything. I was referring to his inventory, Nina. Yeah, bye. See you later. Yeah. Nina takes advantage of you. No, she doesn't. I do it because I want to. You work like a dog to get uh, funding for that museum project. You teach all the classes with her, and she takes the salary. You've never gotten a nickel. Not that we need that nickel. Well, then we don't have a problem, do we? I get to make my little cultural contribution to society, and we don't mess up our tax bracket. See? I do a lot of things I don't get paid for, because I want to. What's the matter? I've just been stabbed. I'm looking for the blood. Oh, was it that bad? It was worse. But don't worry. I'm not going to die of Anina Dworsky. <laughs> Oh, it's for you, Aunt 
Daisy. Oh. Benny. Oh, a Valentine. Do you know who it is? Um, it's you. Oh, Benny. Mm, thank you. I'm going to take it home and hang it up. Ugh. Ted working tonight? Tis the season. Terrific. Oh, for who? For you. For a month, you have no strings. I like my strings. All right, for me. I need your company. I've given up on men. <laughs> Let's board ourselves on some old flits. I know your old flits. A child's bronze is not my idea. <laughs> okay, you pick. Okay, now. Oh, Ninochka. Ninochka. Yeah, it's Garbo. It's terrific. Sounds like a brand of vodka. <laughs> An old friend? No. A new friend? No. <laughs> when you make up your mind, call me. Is that another reproduction? Oh, no, it's, uh... No. Uh, uh, well, no, it's... an original. Mary? Right. Benny. <laughs> he loves you. Paul, we were stranded at an airport. And we had a few lovely hours. You should have left it that way. I didn't want to. What do you want me to say? I you're glad to see me. I'm glad to see you. I, I have to go, Paul. My son's waiting for me. And no, Rasmussen's law does not apply in Chicago. And he's almost 13, and he looks like his father. And you've been married for 14 years, and... And I can't hurt my family. Which is why I'm not going to say that I'm glad to see you. Something happened between us. If it did, I didn't want it to. Well, then I won't try to see you again. I don't suppose you'll believe this, but it was difficult for me to come here today. I've never been attracted to a married woman. But if you change your mind, you know where I am. We never did say goodbye, did we? Goodbye. Goodbye. All this. Hey, Frank, I'm talking to you. All right, Pa, it's styrofoam. It's how they do it on movie sets. Well, the knot holes really fooled you, huh? You're not making a movie. You're remodeling a restaurant. No problem. Our customers don't go around knocking on wood. Hey. Plastic. <laughs> like this gadget here in my heart. You know? If your mother-in-law and my doctor would mind their own business, I'd be back in business. And I'd put you to work again, too, Diane. Just like in high school, remember? I remember. I remember 75 cents an hour, you mule. <laughs> hey. And all those dates with Teddy, eh? Wasn't that a benefit? Teddy, get your finger out of the sauce. Needs more basil. When we were kids, he used to do that. He still does. Hey, I tell you how to figure my taxes, Teddy? No. So, you don't tell my wife how to cook, huh? Are we gonna wait for Alex and his girl, or what? Oh, no way. We should eat now, because when that girl walks in, I'm telling you right now, Ma's gonna lose her appetite. Wait, wait. Ho hold everything. Has anybody told Ma that Penny's coming today? Well, look. I realize that nobody's exactly delirious about Alex's fiancé. But Alex is. 
So what do you say we show a little sensitivity, huh? I mean, after all, this is a baptism. We were sort of waiting for you, Teddy, you know? You know how to tell it. Thanks, Frank. Hey, Diane, you've hardly taken a bite. Oh. You look a little thin. <laughs> well, you couldn't have said a nicer thing. Ted, you should take her on a trip. Don't I always have the tax season? Diane, where are you going this year? Back to Mackinac Island. Andy loves it there. Yeah. Well, um, actually, we're going to talk it over. Who knows? End up uh, taking a trip around the world. Oh, hi, Uncle Alex. Hi. Sorry we're late. Hi. Wine, Mr. Conti. Mom, what no is she calling Mr. Stay, Conti? Stay Shh. Talk to me later. I have something Do you to have consider. relatives in Chicago, Miss Harris? Exactly. No, no, they're all in Ypsilanti. That's in Michigan. Near Detroit? Yes. Where the cars come from. This is my first year in Chicago. Do you get a little homesick? Well, not since I met Mr. Conti. Oh, I mean Alex. I keep calling him that out of habit. After all, at school, you can't call the vice principal Alex. <laughs> so five days a week, I say, yes, Mr. Conti, no, Mr. Conti. Most of the time, she says, yes, Mr. Conti. Alex, stop that. Talk to me later. Ma, Penny is our head clerk. Also in charge of the Mimeo. I cut a mean stencil, don't I? <laughs> I used to say other men bring home lipstick on their collars. Alex has black finger marks on his. <laughs> that was just a joke. What happened? A baptism. It was a drowning. Okay. I couldn't find the ladies' room. Well, that's because it's demolished at the moment. <laughs> me too. Penny. They don't like me, Diane. They will. I do. They'll always like Norma more. Not more. Just differently. I just want to make Alex happy. That's why it means so much to me to be accepted by his family. You will be, as soon as your name is Conti. I hope you like the cooking here. You're going to be eating an awful lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my girlfriend says that Alex is a father figure for me. That's ridiculous. I never even knew my father. So my father said each year he's going to give one of his kids a $3,000 gift. That's $3,000 non-taxable dollars. Some gift, huh? What a vacation we could take. Not that we could spend that kind of dough in two weeks. Hey, what if we took a whole month and went in the summer instead? We could rent one of those expensive campers, drive all through Canada. We could see the Rockies. Diane. I'm talking campers. Sure, Ted. Sounds like a good idea. Night, darling. Throw them on the pile, honey. And go through the pockets. Last time I sent your math homework to the cleaners. Honey, you just run along. I'll take care of it, okay? Okay.
Rasputin. Paul? Diane? Are your hands cold? Everything's cold. Can I interest you in a pair of gloves? Finest quality pigskin, size 8, from Argentina. Is that why you call? Uh, I found them, Paul, in, in, in my coat pocket. Uh, just thought I'd tell you. Now you've told me. Shall I send them? If that's what you want. No, it isn't. What then? I want to see you. And those are flowers. <laughs> and so is that. <laughs> and that's another one. And a different kind of painting of flowers. Now, who can tell me how they're different from each other? Oh, sorry. Nina, would you finish these slides for me? I have to go. It's a little early, isn't it? Well, I don't get paid for my time. I don't have to clock out. Clock out? You never clocked in. You've been out to lunch ever since that old new friend of yours showed up. Thanks a lot, Nina. <coughs> Suddenly occurs to me it's nice to be back in Chicago. I, I got a little lost. A lot. Don't know the territory. Well, welcome to the territory. For him, I keep this special bottle. Mira, Signora. Observe us closely. Okay. It's very complicated. <laughs> Salute, condenero e amor. Yeah. Oh, that's the silliest thing I've ever seen. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Oh, yes. Um, you want to come in for a sec before you go? Yes. That's what the owner said when he first saw it. He thought I was going to have a different kind of studio. Like what? Like tap dance. Like the Lee you had before me. Oh, Paul, no. I'm serious. Tap, ballet, and acrobatic. They left some records. Here. My favorite.
Well, it looks like you're losing both your men, huh? I wish you could come to the cabin with Uncle Alex and me, Dad. I'd love to, Andy, but you know what it's like for me during tax season. However, I do get to spend two days with my calculator in beautiful downtown Gary, Indiana. Yeah. My sentiments. Why don't you go with Alex and the kids this year? Spend a couple of days in the snow. I've already had a couple of days in the snow, thank you. <laughs> You'll forget to give these tax returns to Norma. No, I won't forget. I'm gonna stick them in your bag. Somebody's getting careless these days. Parked in a no parking zone. Don't look so guilty, it's only a parking ticket. My, my. Papers do fly back and forth between the Alexander Contes. What now? Your tax returns. Oh. Alex hasn't signed them yet. Me first. Well, that's very gallant of Alex. He's quite a family man these days, taking all the children away on a holiday. Our Michael, your Andy, his Penny. Norm, I really am sorry about what's happened between you two. Forget it. Nothing's happened between us, not for years. If they uh, kept track of these things, we'd probably be in the Guinness Book of Records. Are you okay? I, I couldn't be better. It's exciting being a 48-year-old single in today's world. Oh. Alex and I were like you and Ted once. Somewhere along the way, something happened. Oh, we should have seen it a long time ago. It was a comedy, trust me. I could suggest a drink, but I won't. I'm sorry, it's late. Oh, it's not the hour, it's the company. As we say to the kiddies, is there something you want to share? Oh, Nina, I've got such a problem. I know, I saw him. I wish I had your problem. I wouldn't be at the movies if I did. Well, you couldn't have my problem. You're 25 and you're single. I try to be older and married. <laughs> Diane, the guy's a winner. I know that part. Relax. Go with it. It's not that simple, and you know it. How about letting me show you some Gary nightlife? Jack, that sounds like a really terrific offer. I got all the nightlife I want waiting for me back in Chicago. Oh, I can't say that I blame you. You know, your new system is terrific. I'm glad we converted. Oh, and by the way, my friend, uh, when do we get to convert you? What do you mean? You're the last holdout, never been to Europe, it's un American. Here, take a few of them home with you. Hey, Jack, let me ask you a question. If you had, say, uh, four weeks, how many museums could your stomach take? <laughs> that depends on how you feel about museums. She's terribly pretty, your daughter. Yes, she is. Right now, she's pretty terrible. 
I haven't heard from her in three weeks. But I can't complain about her upbringing. I'm the one that brought her up. What, no helpful maiden aunts? No adoring grandmothers? No. No mother? No. Sorry. Diane. Don't be afraid to ask me anything. system worked like a charm. The wit's happy, I'm happy, and now I'm going to show you something that's going to make you ecstatic. Come on. Come on. I, I'd have been home. I'm going to pick up at the station. Where were you? At the movies. With Nina. Okay, are you ready? All right, madam. I have here before you the map of Europe. Pick any five countries, turn them face down, and that's where I'm going to take you on your vacation. Go ahead, pick. Come on, come on, pick. She picked Spain, she picked France, she picked Belgium. You like Spain, France, and Belgium? That's uh, the Louvre, my love, and in Spain, it's uh, the Prado. You didn't think I know that one, did you? I didn't. Just goes to show you a little crash course in Gary, Indiana can do. Now, how about Belgium? You like Belgium? Yeah. You don't like Belgium? Strike Belgium. Pick again. Go ahead, go for the whole jackpot. Go ahead, pick. Let's see what you got there. Liechtenstein, nice. You know, right now, I don't know a Picasso from that Benny in there, but you just give me the time, and they're going to be naming museums after me. Yes. I, I know it could be a, a, a wonderful trip, but don't you think it's uh, kind of extravagant? Of course it's extravagant. That's the beauty of it. And we have the money. All I gotta do is give my father the word. Well, don't you think it should be Alex's turn this year? It would give him such a wonderful start with Penny. They're so much in love. And what about us? Aren't we in love? Oh. And come away with me. Just the two of us. We've never gone away alone together. That's it's handy, anyway. As a matter of fact, uh, we're hardly ever alone. Hey, guess what? We are alone. <laughs> You know, um, I had a whole picture of how you'd react when I told you about this trip. And this isn't it. Sorry. Tax season strikes again. Now it's starting to get to you, too. Well, I guess it's bedtime.
You know, when a woman doesn't want to go away, that's the time to really insist on a little bit of preventive medicine. Alex and Penny were here for dinner last night. She put everything back in the wrong place. It's going to take me months to teach her. Well, it took me time, remember? I was younger. You were smarter. When was the last time I used this machine? Night before your wedding. Other men went to stag parties. You took a midnight ride. <laughs> you know, it's the only thing I had to give up when I married Diane. Made her nervous then. Are so I happen to think they're in line, Doc. I don't. Who do you work for, the IRS or Lake Michigan Medical Service? You know, after four years, I'm a little surprised to hear you say that. Four years ago, I didn't have to say that. With five hospitals now, and uh, it's not just my own neck. I got 75 partners to consider. advantage. More deductions. Well, you know how to do it, Ted. Sure, I'm the best. All right, then. Do your thing. Now, take, for example, a $10,000 renovation on my own home. We'll just say that it was done for the Kenilworth Clinic. Terrific. And uh, what do you say we... Um... Take Danford's twin-engine plane and say use it for out-of-town house calls. Or we could call um, Kellerman's little north side pad a course beneficial retreat. That sounds great. It stinks. But you just said that. I said I knew how. I didn't say I would. Yes, sir, Doc. Are we playing or not? It's a book I'm working on. Writing and teaching and all this. How do you find time for yourself? This is myself. Oh. <laughs> you know how I'd like to start my presentation today? Mm. A wonderful thing happened to me on the way to the office. Will you know today if the job is yours? <laughs> it's just a preliminary. I have to see how far they'll go. <laughs> yeah. What time's your appointment? After lunch. Well then, I shall make you lunch. Very well. I had it for breakfast. <laughs> Bad day at work? Oh, uh, no, not at work, at uh, lunch hour. Played racket ball with Stuart Farris today. Did you lose? Are you kidding? Destroyed him. But, um, 
He asked me to do something illegal. I turned him down. Well, you know you did the right thing. I always do the right thing. Trouble is, it seems to be getting harder and harder every year. It'll be all right. They need you there. So why am I still sharing an office with Leonard? Why are we still living on the third floor? Ted, higher doesn't make it better. I care for you so much. Now I love to look at your beautiful face. Homework. Oh, Mom. Go on. Any more questions, Norma? Nope. And over here and over there. Norma Conti. Norma Conti. May she rest in peace. It's all right. You don't have to sign the copies. Well, who gets custody of the copies? Norma. Why don't you come down and have lunch with me one day? Just the two of us. I'll show you how to fill out your individual return. Or even better, we'll just have lunch. No, I don't think I'll be doing much business with the Conti family anymore. No more uh, guff from Joseph. Those silly Sunday dinners. Oh, Lord, how I hated Steffi's lasagna. I know. You feel like divorcing all of us. Well, I wish you luck, Norm. I really do. Oh. I'll have a lot of good luck. Don't you go to the new movies? Don't you read the latest books? Tomorrow, I'll have it made. <laughs> First door I walk into, he'll hire me. First party I go to, he'll find me. He'll be talented and wildly romantic. And I'll discover my own hidden talents. And as for Alex, he'll be miserable. After six months, Penny will leave him He'll want to come back, but I, of course, won't have him. I'll be too busy discovering myself. <sighs> you know what I really wish? I wish I'd never found out about Alex. He could have had his little fling, and nothing would have changed. I don't think you mean that, Norma. Could you really live like that? <laughs> Half the world lives like that. No one has it all. What's that supposed to mean? Do you think you have it all? I love you, Paul. I love Ted. I love you differently. Oh, it's wrong. It's crazy. I know it. No. It just doesn't work. Not for me. You and I have the advantage. We can... We can talk about it. We can tell each other everything. I can't tell Ted anything. You will when you know what you want. You knew my situation. I never said I'd change it. I never lied to you. I'm tired of being the invisible man. I'm not capable of living like this. There are too many places we can't go because we might be seen. It's not honest. You've got to make a decision, Diane. I'm not sure I know how. Salvation Army? What do you think? You know, it just hit me. I'm a man with 11 pairs of old brown shoes. You know what that means? I got too many brown suits. 
and it's your fault. Remember when you told me that brown goes with my eyes? I remember. I remember. Still think so? <laughs> Diane, what's the matter? Oh, me, Ted. Honey, what is it? What's wrong? No. I love you. Something's happened. It doesn't change the way I feel about you. It just changes the way I feel about me. I haven't been honest with you, Ted. Um, what I'm trying to tell you is I'm involved with another man. How long? I didn't want it to happen. I didn't. I wasn't looking for it. He wasn't either. We met when I went to. Don't give me any details. I don't want to hear any details. Hi, what did I do wrong? Have I changed? No. No. When did you decide that you just weren't happy with me? You never decided. I, I, I... Well, something is wrong! And you tell me what it is. What should I fix? Can I shave more sexy? Can I get up in the morning more brilliant? What do you want from me? I am what I am. I am too. I'm just not the same as... Well, what, you've changed, is that anymore. it? anymore. You've I, changed, I is that it? I'm just not your high school sweetheart, and I have needs I didn't have. You got needs, have huh? no needs? I can't fill them, is that it? No, that's not it. So you got somebody else? I can clear, I can clear! in the sports page. Good morning, Mr. Conner. Oh, I can't start the day without the sports, oh, right? Good morning, Sheriff. Why does someone do that? Why? Dr. Ferris was in this morning. Ferris? Yeah, I lose yeah. all the sports. Can't pick up his files. Huh? I'll lose anyone the obituaries. Said he wouldn't be needing anymore. Lose all the obituaries. Who reads the obituary? I do. It's the only thing you can believe in those lousy papers these days. Well, I'm sure Mr. Connie doesn't read them. But Mr. Connie doesn't take advantage of me either. So sharpen your own pencils. I was hired as a paraprofessional, Mr. Sawyer. Oh. Yeah. And what and why is a paraprofessional? And whose bright idea was that, Conti? You don't take it so hard. Dr. Ferris's account isn't the end of the world, Mr. Conti. I know, Sherry. Do you feel okay? Yeah, I'm all right. Anything I can do? Well, it's sort of a personal matter, you know? And you don't want to talk about it? Well, if you ever did want to talk about it, I got a real coffee maker in my office. Thanks, Sherry. 
Hey, you know, I don't think I've ever had a cup of coffee with anyone. And I've been here two months. I, I, uh, told him. Because I had to. F for me. You mean for us? No, you don't understand. No, I don't. I told him about us. I didn't tell him I was leaving him. This is no game, Diane. I want to marry you. I know, I know. I, I, I need more time. No, you don't. If you're not going to leave him, why did you tell him? I know. office. And it told me. Have you had any dinner? Went out to eat with one of the paraprofessionals in the office. It's a paraprofessional dinner. A veggie burger. I get the name of the place. Eating a lot of sprouts. Little piece of bacon that wasn't bacon. Meat that wasn't meat. Please. Please. Stay with me and help me work this out. That's funny. I should stay and help you decide to leave me. I don't want to leave you. Oh, a little of this, a little of that. Ted, I love you both. You can't be in love with two people at the same time. Somebody's got to lose. Open marriage? Is that what you want, Diane? Ted, I'm trying to... Uh... To what? To be fair? You get 100%. What do I get? Where are you going? Tell Andy I'll be staying close to the office for a while. We're lucky he'll believe that. How much should I tell myself? I'll be at the Colonial House. Ask for that. You know what? You don't have to pretend. I'm not pretending. No, it's worse. You're lying. I heard him leave last night. He didn't come back. I know because I didn't go to sleep. Oh, Andy. Andy, darling. You two don't love each other anymore.
How you doing, son? Good. Good to see you. Yeah. What do you think of this, baby? Huh? Hey, you're really shining it up nice. Looks great. One and only. Does it go? Does it go? Why don't you just hop on and see? Okay. Okay, grab your on the waist. Tight. You ready? Yep. Okay, here we go. All right, the thing is, you gotta drive defensively. You know what I mean? Right, safe. More than safe. Like the other guy is the enemy. Because he usually is. Yep. Did you ever motocross? Sure, when I was younger. The great thing about motocross is you could do things that you can't do on the road. Like wheelies, um... You didn't tell me you weren't coming home from school? I didn't know. Don't you ever do that again. I don't need your permission. I'll, um... Take my son for a ride whenever I want him. No, you won't. I'm the one who sits at home here and worries about him. If you want to take him for a ride, just call me first. And if a man answers? He won't. Don't you think I have any feelings for Andy? Now, look, we're just going to have to make some rules for ourselves. I can't live like this. I think you should have thought about that one a little sooner. Better or worse, till hives do his part. Don't be childish, Diane. Let me come pick you up. Oh, no. I definitely do not want you to see me today. I'll bring you roses and calamine. No. All right, tomorrow, I'll take you to the darkest restaurant in town. <laughs> OK. Bye. What do you think of it? How can anything that costs so much smell so bad? <laughs> How do you feel? I don't know. How am I supposed to feel? I don't know women bought these magazines. <laughs> It goes like this. I knew you'd like it. Oh, here comes the thing. Good evening, Monsieur. How are you? Good. Thank you. Sorry. Time got away from me. But not the client. The potential client. This is a job I want. You know that, Diane. Then you ought to know something about me. I'm frightened. I have a lot at stake, and tonight I felt abandoned. Well, I don't play the martyr. I've had that in my life. I just spent two hours in a restaurant not knowing where you were, what I was doing there. Not knowing? How many hours do you think I've spent? You have a whole life without me. Oh, yes, I have a life. 
and I'm putting it on the line for you. Get, get out of here. Not like that. I'm sorry. Sherry, I, th I think I better be going now. Do you have to? This is nice. Yeah, it really is. Don't talk. Just let what happened keep happening. Sherry, you're really a terrific person. And I like you a lot. But I just uh, don't belong here, you know? Sorry. Time to get through. I'm not sure. Can you call me? stuff here. I know, we work here. Now, what are you really doing? You're dead. I want us to get back together again. Look, you're my wife and this is crazy. Just get rid of the guy with the silver foreign car. You were following me? That's right. Because sitting around wondering is worse. Please, just keep your voice down. I don't give a damn who hears. But I do. Don't do this. You've done this. Now end it. Get him out of your life. I gotta go to work. At least I still have a job. I think. Here you go, Dennis. I saved you more than last year. Thanks, Ted. Every little bit counts. Dennis, I got a favor. Yeah. How do I get the name and address that goes with that license number? I'm only an assistant supervisor, Ted. There's a lot of red tape at the Department of Motor Vehicles. Come on, Dennis. You can cut that red tape.
Paul Rasmussen. Come on in. I'm in the den. Which is the den? Oh. Sorry, I was expecting a client. Let me write down. Yes? My name is Joseph. Andrew Joseph. A friend of a friend recommended you. I need some uh, advice on a piece of property. Sit down. Care for a drink? I have a scotch. Straight? Yeah, sure. Now, what kind of advice can I give you? Well, it's a uh, piece of land that I inherited from my uncle. It's up toward Island Park. Mm hmm But it's uh, close to where I work. Yes? I'm Ted Conti. I don't know whether to kill you or congratulate you on your taste in women. I'm sorry. I love her very much. You had 14 years to make it work. And you figure that's enough. She wants to make a move. Let her. The new South Side Development Project? Mm hmm. About the size of the stuff you usually do? No. They're not all that large. It's not over yet. Alex is more old fashioned than you realize. He wants me to wear a long white dress. So do I. I've never been married before. Don't worry, please. We'll find you one. That lace with the train. The dream, isn't it? it? Certainly is. Oh, $300 worth of it. I'll go down to the loop on Monday. I know I'll find something. Penny, I had a beautiful wedding dress. Would you like to borrow it? Oh, Diane. I didn't know you were coming over. Andy, you know what a Phillips head screwdriver is? Uh, no, I don't think so. You know what a wrench is? Sure. Then get me a wrench, huh? It's downstairs in my uh, car truck. Okay. Diane, people who are going away in April should be making reservations now. Well, Ted and I are just sort of playing it by ear this year. Besides, the trip was getting to be a ritual for us. Rituals are good for people. I, I don't believe what's happening here. How could you do this to me? It's us, Joseph, our lives. Didn't I discover you? Didn't I put the two of you together? And now you're telling me that I'm a bad matchmaker? What I don't need is more guilt. I've just got to work this out for myself. Huh. I can accept that. I'm not old country. I live in a modern world. I keep up. Not like your mother-in-law. No, for her, a divorce in the family is like the eighth deadly sin. Some things I just, I can't understand. Why are you breaking up a happy marriage? For what? What for? I'm sorry. Oh, look. 
Alex and uh, Norm, I can understand. It takes two to ruin a marriage, but you two? I, I thought what you had was something special. Just please don't. Look, look, I'm asking you. No, no, I'm telling you. I want to see the both of you at that wedding tomorrow. Oh, thanks, Andy. <laughs> I don't know when it's getting married today, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, Alex. My head's someplace else. By the way, what happened to my tax return? I don't want to have to pay a penalty. I brought it. I just don't want to spoil your day. Oh, are you kidding? You couldn't ruin it. No way. I got an accountant who takes care of me. A woman who loves me. Well, that's good, Alex. And I hope she loves you a lot. Because it's all you're going to have to live on. <laughs> hey, big brother. Good luck. of these witnesses for the purpose of uniting in matrimony Alex Conti and Penny Harris. Why not? Aren't we a wonderful family? Good times, bad times. Look how we pull together. Isn't that what families are for? It's time we had a talk. I'll see you at home later. Not there. All right, tomorrow. Oh. Okay, did you wind the film? What? Okay, all right, come on. Is it cut? Come on, let's go. Ready for the countdown? Okay, three, two, one. What's the <laughs> What's the matter? Did you get it? I don't know. That's my youngest son, Frank, and the skinny one is my daughter-in-law, Steffi. Now this is mine. Is it cut? My Diane. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Tell me, what will I be if I'm not your in-law? An outlaw? Oh, Anna, no. 
eat your cake. I made it. It's good. She's got us doing multiple equations. They're not even in the book. That's because your math teacher wants you to start figuring out some things for yourself. If you could look it up in the book, what good is it? Yeah, I guess. Well, anyway, it'll be a little easier with my calculator. It may be easier, but it kind of defeats the purpose of what you're doing. I think I should have held off a little in giving you that calculator. Well, I'm not the only one. Half the kids in math class use calculators. Why should I beat my brains out? So you don't forget how to use them. You use one. Hey, I've already beaten my brains out. What do you say? Want me to help you with your homework? Maybe up to dinner. Yeah, you won't be here. I keep forgetting. Yeah, I uh, do that sometimes myself. The other day, uh, after work, I took the wrong road home. Tonight, just once. Couldn't you stay? I don't think so, Andy. Why not? You're already here. It, um, it just doesn't work that way. Yeah. Come on. Come on, little guy. I'm sorry. Bother you? Oh, no. Ten years from now, and they start whistling, that will bother me. No worry. I'll be there, and I will whistle. Will you? I don't like the sound of that. Well, where can we talk? Go on, let's get out of here. What is it? Very um, grateful to you, you know. You've made me think about who I am, what my life should be about. Oh, I love you. I always will. I love what we've had. You've added something to my life. Say it. It's, uh, it's those ten years from now, I... What you're saying is... You're going to compromise. I'm making a choice. I know what I have. And I know what I'm giving up. No, you don't. We never stop living in separate worlds. We could have had something. I won't let you go like this. But you've already built your house, haven't you? Can we talk now? I met him. Yes, I know. And uh, I just want to tell you that if that's what you it's want... It's over. What do you mean? I mean I've ended it with Paul.
said. I was ready to let you go. Look, what do you want from me? We can't go back to what we were. No. But we could go on from here. Everything's different now. Yes, I know. I know you don't trust me. I don't even trust myself. I didn't think I'd ever say that, but I'm learning. It just took me a little longer than you. Are you trying to tell me that, that you don't want me back? I don't know. But I'm not going to be looking over my shoulder for the rest of my life. You won't have to. I am what I am, remember? Yes. That's why I'm here. Are you settling? Oh. You are, aren't you? And you're scared. I'm scared. I love you. And I'm so afraid I'm going to lose you. She's uh, trying to tell us something. <laughs> Will you come home with me now? back to my place. Got a lot to think about. What a rough season. Like any black shoes? Yeah. Maybe we'll get together and uh, pick out a blue suit to go with them. I'm asking you to stay. 